So you are welcome once again uh, to this powerful session. Uh, we are beginning the third module of the School of Transformational Leadership. Remember, uh, we are pursuing a transformed nation, one neighborhood at a time. Uh, this is a personal leadership journey, your own personal uh, leadership journey. And, and I want you to take it uh, very seriously because in a couple of uh, years from now, uh, you will begin to see the amazing results of uh, what you are doing uh, through this School of Transformational Leadership. We are committed to your, to your development. We are committed to equipping you and to releasing you so that you can you can bring transformation to our society. So I'd like you to enjoy yourself uh, while we continue with this uh, personal leadership journey in the transformative, transformative roundtable uh, conversation. Today, we are going to focus on module three, which is uh, we'll be learning about the art and science of leadership. Science of leadership. So we'll be learning about the art and science of leadership. Uh, today we are going to start uh, with an interactive session. So I want you to be able to participate as much as possible, uh, because it is it is necessary that we we have that conversation so that I know where you stand. Uh, in your knowledge about what you think and what you feel about school of transformational leadership. So in this module three, we'll be looking at uh, job peak quarter change process, a survival experience of a worker center in times of crisis. Uh, is a reviewed uh, is a is a review of a case study that I did some time ago. Uh, I actually did a research using that organization uh, to see how uh, changes can occur within that organization, especially during the time of a crisis. So we'll be having a, a real life uh, situation of an organization that is in a crisis and how they were able to, uh, how they were able to initiate change uh, to ensure that the organization so uh, we're also going to do a review of Robert Quay's book. Uh, the title of the book is Deep Change. So it's one of the uh, material we are going to be looking at in this module. Uh, and I believe you all have a copy of that uh, material. Uh, we will be looking at that today, but next week uh, we'll be looking into that. That we are going to look into a complete analysis of the case study on leadership in times of change. So we are going to uh, do a comprehensive and a complete analysis of the worker center, uh, ecumenical uh, worker center, uh, ecumenical uh, center, so that we we can understand how changes uh, can be. Uh, can be implemented uh, in an organization that is going through a difficult time. Today, we are going to focus on the fundamental core values of School of Transformational Leadership. In other words, what we are trying to do here is we want to try and understand what the School of Transformational Leadership stands for. Here we are talking about what is driving us as an organization. What is it that we are that we can say is our focus as an organization? I remember somebody was asked to me, uh, he, said, he said, are we a profit-making organization or are we a charity-based organization? 
Uh, I, I said, well, uh, we are not, I don't, I don't want to use the word charity, but we are, we are also not profit, but we are somehow in between. But our focus is not to make profit. Our focus in this organization is to impact values to people is to impart values to people. And that is what uh, we stand for in School of Transformational Leadership. But I want to hear from you. And I want to start by asking, what is your perception of School of Transformational Leadership? I believe uh, some of us have been able to go through our website. You've been able to uh, go through it and see some of the programs that we have in place. Uh, so I, I believe that should be able to give you some kind of ideas of what the School of Transformational Leadership, uh, uh, what we stand for. So I want to hear your whole perception of what we stand for in School of Transformational Leadership. So I, I want our response, you know, like I said, this is an interactive session. So you can go ahead. Go ahead, Papi. Do you want to say something? I just wanted to tell, tell the uh, participants that they can unmute and yeah. contribute. Yeah, they can unmute and contribute. That is very, very are important. You can build and contribute. We won't be looking at our faces. It is important that we we contribute. What was the question what again, sir? Again, sir. What is your perception of school of transformational <laughs> leadership? How do you perceive this organization? Hi, good evening, sir. Yeah, yeah. good evening. All right, my name is Adams. Yeah, you're welcome, Adams. Yeah, so what my perceptions of transformational leadership is um, um while I was um um looking into uh, the websites, I saw a quote by Amazam um, Gandhi that says that be the change you want. Yeah. So transformational leadership is actually you um you know doing something looking at the the um situation of things and trying to turn it around yeah trying to um be the um, the change agents yeah doing something in a different in a, in, a, in a different um um doing something in a different way to get a meaningful result yeah Ab absolutely so uh before I came to this class, there was I was I stumbled upon a video whereby someone said that a lot of people don't want to work with the government because they feel like government is a government organization is a very terrible place and they kill talent. But the person now issued a reboot at that. Why don't you go there to actually be the change that is needed in that place? Why don't you go? Why don't people go there or have the mindset of going there to? be the change so transformational leadership actually means bring being the change in a place whereby things are not going um in the right direction so that's thank my you. perception of, thank you uh, very much adams I, I think you've just set uh, the ball rolling uh, by making that uh, powerful powerful statement uh, from mahatma gandhi who says be the change you want to see in the world you see Transformational leadership, to be a transformational leader, the focus is not on your environment. The focus is on yourself. You have to, you have to experience that change from within you before you can now begin to carry out or, be, or before you can now begin to effect that change in the society. So the change has to begin with you. If the change is not beginning with you, there is no way you will be competent to effect the change in the society. So you have to be the change you want to see in the world. Thank you, Adam, for uh, raising that powerful 
a quote from Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, do we have any other response? What is your perception? Maybe we just take one or two more and then we move to the next question. What is your perception of School of Transformational Leadership? Good afternoon, sir. I'll build and, and speak. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. You're welcome. My name is Mayawa Akinwande. You're welcome, Mayawa. All right. What I want to give in as a contribution is also in line with what um, the first person has said. Yeah. So when I was going through the materials yesterday, even as some document that was sent in, one thing that hit my mind was if, um, the school of leadership is actually built in a way. I was actually um, focusing my insight on why why this particular school. And what I was able to pinpoint is this school is actually built for people who are not just wanting to be a leader. People who want to build a leader, even from their seven, within and around them. Yeah. Thank you. So Thank you. that's one thing I was able to I was able to add on to from what I've read so far on the document sent and what I've read on the website. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh Bio for that uh, powerful contribution. Yeah, we we are we are not just read, raising leaders, uh, or we are not just raising ordinary leaders. We are raising leaders who a third will raise other leaders. That is what we are out here to do as School of Transformational Leadership. And our focus is strictly on people like you, not, not people that cannot be changed. You know, there is, there, is, uh, there, is a, there is something that a statement somebody made some time ago. Uh, I had that statement many, many years ago, over 20 years ago, and that statement has stuck with me. Uh, the person said, it is better to train a child than to repair an adult. Now, what we are doing at School of Transformational Leadership is that we are trying to nurture young generation into taking their place in the position of leadership later in life. You know, somebody was asking me, uh, you are not, it seems this organization is focused on people who are under the age of 19, 20, uh, and, you know, just below the age of 30. I said, yes, because I believe that once people are already out of college, there is nothing you can do to form them again. So I want to really catch people at that stage of their life when they can still be formed, when they can still be changed, when they can still be uh, bolded. So, but when they are out of college, it's like the battle is already lost. So I don't want to lose the battle. So that is why I am focused on the younger generation to be able to prepare them through life in putting into them the values of a leader so that when they go out of college, they, are not, they, they already have the mindset of a leader. So they are not just thinking like um, a follower. They, they already have the mindset of the leader. So everything they do from that moment, they begin to do it from the point view of a leader. Do we have somebody else say something uh, to what your perception is, then we go to the next question. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, you're welcome. Good My afternoon. name is Toby Olawe. Um, I am opportune to uh, be among the people that actually, you know, sit down to plan and start the school. And from my own perception, I, I noticed the founder has um, a niche for a, a change in uh, African society. Yeah. So, and he, he, he actually, uh, before I, I agreed to probably join the train, he, we sat down 
probably we had we had conversations and he, he made us understand that we had the change we are clamoring for. You know, we 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 looked at different topics from politics to uh, businesses to even our personal relationship with our fellow uh, you know neighbors and and all and we noticed that in every aspect of our life we we tend to be uh, in a leadership role even within the four walls of our house we all have something we we have that we um, how I put it that we have to make sure it works out well so now my perception to school of uh, transformational leadership is we getting a break from the norm we all know oh this thing this is the way nigeria has perceived it to be or this is the way the society have perceived this thing to be and we all know deep down that it's wrong like we are now the change what school of transformational leadership is all about is how do we now bring the change we ourselves wanted for instance now we want good government we want good governance we want uh, our leaders to, you know, give us uh, 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 social amenities. They should give us health care. They should give us, you know, good things and 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 all. But they keep reshuffling within themselves, doing the same thing all over, all over, all over, and all over again. And we have to keep we keep getting the same results each time. All these things are happening. So now, looking at it from our angle, we tend to know that even we the youths, we are we are the cause of our misfortune. Let me just put it that way. So, and School of Transformational Leadership is now having a target audience of the youths in order to make the future a better place and in order to be a better version of ourselves. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Toby Olawi has raised some very, very powerful uh, uh, point it is uh, uh, in, the, in the observation that he has made. Uh, by the way, Toby Olaoye is our operation uh, specialist uh, at School of Transformational Leadership. So and he's been doing a very wonderful job. Now, let me say, uh, or let me pick my point from what Toby has said. Uh, just like he said, we are breaking from the norms. You see, one thing about bringing a change to a society or to an organization is that you cannot afford to continue to do things the way people have been doing it and expect to have a different result. If you want a different result, you have to do something different. And that is why our focus in this organization is to focus on the youth. And I know by now, you know that 70% of African population are under the age of 35. 70%, I mean. And Africa is about 1 billion people now. In 2023, the population of Africa is about 1 billion. And 70% of that 1 billion, which means about 700 million uh, people are under the age of 35 in Africa. And, and I guess, my guess will be, all of you will be in that category. And that is why we are so passionate about you because you are the leaders of tomorrow. But if leaders of tomorrow are not, are not prepared or are not well prepared to take their place in that tomorrow when it arrives, then we will continue to have the fools who lead us and then mess it is up for us. So our desire is to equip you with what it takes for you to bring changes to our society, bring changes to our culture, 
our desire in this school of transformational leadership is to change the way people think and alter the way people behave because culture is about how we behave and what we know, what we have heard, what we have listened to are the things that affect the way we behave. And that is why we are focusing so much on you in these 20 different sessions that we have under this personal leadership journey. We call it personal leadership journey because the journey is all about you. Now, let's move to the next question. What do we represent or what do we not represent? Uh, maybe I should just have from a few of us, what do you think we represent and what do you think we do not represent? Uh, before I, I tap it up with uh, my own idea of what I think we represent. What do you think we represent? You can build at top. What do we think School of Transformational Leadership represents? What do you think we represent? You can just say one word. You don't have to say a whole complete sentence. Just one word is enough to describe what we represent as School of Transformational Leadership. What do we represent? Or what do we not represent? Just one word is okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. okay. Uh, is that beyond right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I you are the same, like the school is that change that we want to impact on us. So, actually, what we are doing now is a process. I think we can do some of the change. So right. Thank you. Uh, no, I can barely hear you, but I, I get what you are trying to say that. Uh, in School of Transformational Leadership, uh, we are the change. You are, you are trying to emphasize the fact that we are that change. We, the change is not going to come from somewhere. We have to be that change and then uh, begin to transmit, be a transmitter of that change. Uh, let, let that change now begin uh, to cascade uh, into other people's alive and activities. Thank you very much. So who else, does anybody else want to say what we represent or what we do not represent as School of Transformation and Leadership? What do we represent? Yeah, Bayo, are you raising your hand? What do we represent or what we do not or do not represent? Well, I will say in School of Transformational Leadership, we represent excellence. That is one thing we represent. We want you to be excellent in everything that you do. In School of Transformational Leadership, we represent quality. You have to be just like uh, Toby said the other time, you always have to aspire to be the best version of yourself. What you have today, aspire to experience a better version of yourself tomorrow. So don't let what you have today be what you are going to be tomorrow. By the time you get to tomorrow, let a new version of you emerge. Let something different about, about you emerge. You know, we represent excellence, we represent quality, and we, we are also passionate about the youth, just like Toby also said. We, we are not so much focused on the paparazzi, you know, uh, 
we are not we are we are we are not focused on being flamboyant. This is this school of transformational leadership is not after crowd. We are, we are not looking for crowd. Are you are you getting what I'm saying? We are, we are, we are not looking for uh we are one thousand five hundred or we are ten thousand in that meeting. That is not our focus in School of Transformational Leadership. We know that if you want to bring a change to a society, you don't need multitude of people to do that. You, don't, you only need an handful of people to bring the change. And as God will be helping us as time goes on, we are also hoping that this School of Transformational Leadership our curriculum, particularly the personal leadership journey, and maybe some other activities will be uh, that will be running through this organization will be offered for free. But of course, when we say offer for free, that doesn't mean uh, is, we are not going to incur costs. It's what we what it simply means is that somebody else will take care of that cost. So that is that is the kind of uh, that is to show you the kind of passion uh, that we have for this school, uh, and we we are we are all out for children in the elementary school. Uh, we are all out for students at the uh, at the junior secondary school, senior secondary school, those who are in the college, so that we effectively have a presence in the life of this a young generation, so that by the time they are going into the workforce, they are already thinking like a leader and acting like a leader. So these are some of the things uh, we stand for. Uh, we stand for, uh, for productivity. We stand for creativity. We stand for uh, authenticity. We, we, we stand for uh, we start for having a good vision. You know, every good thing that you can think of that you want to see in a leader. Every good thing you, you think you want to see in a leader, uh, they, are, uh, they are all the things we start for. So that is who we are as a school of transformational leadership. Now, I want to ask you a very personal question. This is personal, and I want you to answer it as, uh, as honest as it could be. Does our core values matches your expectation of who we conceive ourselves to be? Does our core value is good? I, I'm sure you've gone through the website. I don't have all the information on my head now. If not, I would have been telling you a lot of things. But I'm sure I purposely asked Toby to send the link of the website to you so that you can view the website for yourself. That is just the foundation of what we are about to do in School of Transformational Leadership. Now, I'm asking you this question. Does our core values in this School of Transformational Leadership matches your expectation of who we conceive ourselves to be. So we can, we can respond to that, then we move to the next slide. Does our core value matches your expectation? If you are not answering this, simply be Perhaps maybe we are not meeting your expectation, but I hope we are seriously meeting it. Yeah, somebody said, yes, sir. Uh, Bayoa said, yes, sir. Uh, definitely, yes, sir. So uh, that's a positive word from Bayoa. He said, we are meeting the link. If you don't feel like talking, you can just put it on the chat. I will definitely say what you have said. Uh, are we meeting your expectation? You know, this is this is a feedback uh, to assure us that we are doing something right uh, in the life of people. So you can just put it on the on the chat uh, what you think. 
uh, about our our core values meeting your expectation. Uh, okay, somebody said, I have just joined Doe. I hope to see what the organization has in store for me. Okay, so you are still looking forward to what uh, the organization can offer you. I can assure you that the organization has so much in stock for you. Uh, so just just go along with us. Yeah, somebody said, yes, the school core values matches my expectation. You know, these are positive affirmation that we are really doing something important in the life of people, uh, particularly uh, the people uh, of Africa. So we are we are we are we are beating leads. We are impacting life. We are changing lives, and that is what we hope to continue to do uh, in the coming days. So thank you, everyone. So let's move to the uh, next slide. Here we are confronted with a question, and the question is: Is leadership an art or a science? Now, when we say leadership is an act, what we are saying, in essence, is just like asking yourself a question, are leaders born or made? How do you want to answer that question? Do you want to say leaders are born, they are not made, or you want to say leaders are made, they are not born? Or how do you want to answer that question? So that is the way uh, I want to see, or I, I would like to frame that question. Is leadership an act or a science? Does anybody wants to say something to that? Is leadership an act or a science? I know for those of us who have done management courses, you must have come across uh, some management uh, courses in school that that is asking questions like, is management an act or a science? I remember when I was doing my, uh, well, my first master's, a master's degree in uh, personnel uh, uh, relation, uh, we were asked that question in one, of my, in one of my class, is management a science or an art? In fact, the, the lecturer gave us an assignment on that on that uh, question. Uh, that was many, many years ago. Is leadership an act or a science? Well, leadership as an act, I would say is built around relationships and excellent communication skill that are inherent in a leader. You see, <laughs> Leadership as an heart has to do with you as a leader. It has to do with, with the, your competency as a leader. It has to do with your ability, your capacity as a leader. It has to do with your ability to move things around. And it, it has to do with your, with your DNA, your genetic makeup as a leader. That is what leadership is as an act. It is about how you are able to interact with people, how you are able to communicate with people. And you know, in doing all this, it requires certain amount of skills to be able to do that. So in that sense, leadership is an act. It is the ability to apply leadership principles, flexible, intuitive, and creative manner that reflects your makeup as an individual. That is what leadership as an act is. Now, to conceive leadership as a science 
It means it is based on the fact that there are methodologies or systemic approaches or processes or models to follow for leadership performance. And that is why we are teaching you about strategic leadership. That is why we are teaching you about adaptive leadership. That is why we are teaching you about creative leadership. That is why we are teaching you about uh, transforming your leadership. That is why we are teaching you about uh, the call to multiply leadership. Because leadership itself is a methodology. There are processes to it. If you don't understand those process, you are going to struggle as a leader. And if you don't master those process, you are going to struggle. You are not going to be effective as a leader. So leadership as a science is something that can be observed, acquire, and then replicate. You can observe it, acquire the skill, and replicate the same results. That is what leadership as a science is. It means that what you have learned, you can also produce the same level of results. That is what it means. That is what leadership as a science is. So in other words, we can conclude that leadership is a combination of science and hearts. Leadership is both at heart and science. You know, just like I asked at the beginning, it's like asking yourself, are leaders born or made? Well, you cannot say leaders are not born because there is no unborn leader. Have you seen any unborn leader? All leaders are born. So leaders, so everyone who who is privileged to take decision on behalf of one or two persons is a leader in his own capacity. So we are all born leader. We have, we are, we are naturally, you know, we are not naturally built with a leadership ability within us, but it is a different thing for you to now develop those leadership ability. But the unfortunate thing is that many people do not take time to develop those leadership ability or capacity that they possess. So leaders are born in that sense. And then leadership, leaders are made in the sense that you are not just relying on your natural ability to lead as a leader. You are also fine tuning those skills that you possess as a leader. You are fine tuning it, you are upgrading it, you are, you are making sure you are getting better every day. You are making sure that you are better than your yesterday, today is better than your yesterday, and you are ensuring that your tomorrow is going to be far more superior than what you can offer today. So in that sense, leaders are also made. In other words, you are going to continue to engage in what people refer to as long, uh, 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 long term learning, you know, uh, long life learning. Sorry, I mean, long life learning. For you to be a very strong leader, you have to incorporate long life learning uh, to everything that you do. So you are, you are never, you never stop learning. Uh, you never think once you graduate from the college, that will be the end of developing yourself. You are always developing yourself and making yourself better. That is what it means to be made as a leader. So you can, you can, you can have natural leadership gift, but then you also need to continue to develop those skills so that they can be put to optimal use. Now, let's talk about value-oriented leader versus profit-oriented leader. 
Now, in School of Transformational Leadership, we are value-based organization. We are, of course, if we don't make money, the organization is not going to survive. We understand that. But much more than focusing on profits, our primary goal is to impact values to people, is to make people better, is to make people to be ethical, is to make people to be morally upright. That is what we stand for in School of Transformational Leadership. And just like one of us said, it is breaking people from the norms of the society, especially the norms that are contradictory to what depicts a good, a good leader. So anything that depicts the picture of a good leader, we want to break loose from that from those kind of norms. For example, we all know that in Africa, corruption has now become an identity. In fact, people don't even see anything wrong in being corrupt. You know, these are the kind of norms we want to break from so that we uphold good values more than the pursuit of money. I'm not saying money is not good. It's good to pursue money. It's good to have good body. It's good to flourish in life. But much more than body, we need to focus on our values, on our character. That is why uh, the scripture says uh, a, good, a good name is better uh, than uh, silver and gold. So much more than focusing on silver and gold, we are focusing on on, on developing the value base of people. So value-based leadership, I would say, is a type of leadership style that promotes certain ethical values. So in School of Transformational Leadership, what we are promoting is ethical values. While profit-based leadership is a type of leadership style that is motivated by profit in principles. Now, that does not mean that people who pursue profit don't, cannot sometimes be ethical. That's not what I'm saying. But what, what I'm saying is that in our own organization, we are not putting money as our number one priority. Our number one priority is to impact values into people. Then body cannot follow, but the number one priority is to impact values into them. So, what are some of the benefits of value-oriented leadership? Uh, maybe some people want to try and uh, help us with some of the benefits of value-oriented leadership or value-based leadership. What are some of the benefits? What are some of the benefits? <coughs> I was um I was going through um uh, sorry I'm Toby Olawi. Yeah. I was going through um a a how I put it like a, a journal and I I I came across something that I think resonates with what we are discussing right now. Yeah. It's just like you you want to create wealth. Yeah. So the yeah. The, the 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 person said if if you want to be rich don't chase wealth raised men. Wow, that's powerful. So you want to be rich, don't chase money, raise men. Like th that word actually, it's like, like a brimstone today because I was, I did not go to work. So I was, I, was, uh, I was in the bank, I came back, I was just going through the journal and I had issues with bank issues. And also I was trying to sort out my, my issues in the bank and all. And when I saw the journal, I was like, if you want money, don't chase money, raise men. And coming to the question now, what are some of the benefits of a value-oriented leadership? If you are adding value, like you place value as in the premium 
point or the premium price is value. Like you are value oriented and yeah. you are a leader and you put value first yeah. before any other thing. Yeah. It's, it's, it goes, it's, it's like a long term. It's like you are sowing seed exactly. and you are, it's like you are sowing a seed that you are going to, it's just like a, a farmer planting a maize. It's seasonal. Like, you, you know, the expected months to get your results. And a farmer planting cocoa, yeah. it takes time. But in the long run, it pays off. You can't compare the amount a, a maize farmer will get, no matter the hectares of land, to what, you know, a cocoa farmer, like a, a successful cocoa farmer will get. It might, it might take years. It might take, just like the palm kernel stuff to the palm tree too. So it's... It's you being a, a, a value-oriented leader. You are not just uh, leading the people. You are creating, you are making them to have more value and more useful even to themselves, apart exactly. from the people they are leading. Exactly. So that's my own contribution to it. Thank you. I think you have raised some very powerful points there. And uh, uh, just like you said at the beginning, uh, if, you, if you really want to be uh a good leader don't focus on raising body but focus on raising people uh i think it is the chinese proverb that says if you want uh uh if you want uh, uh if you want to be if you want a legacy for 10 years he said uh plant trees or something like that but if you want to, if you want a lifetime legacy, said so you need to plant people. So uh, our focus is not to plant things that people will see today and they will rejoice at tomorrow. And there is nothing to show for it anymore. Our focus is to build an enduring legacy in the continent of Africa. Now, let me also ask this question. Is it wrong to be a profit-oriented leader? Is it totally wrong? Can we say it is wrong to be profit-oriented as a leader? Is it wrong? Yes, who is responded, responded to that? Is it wrong to be profit-oriented as a leader? You can abuse a, a talk. Is it wrong? Okay, somebody said, uh, no, sir. All right, somebody said it is not wrong uh, to be profit-oriented uh, leader. And I can affirm that with you, that it is not totally out of place uh, to be a profit-oriented leader, but it's just important that we balance this up so that we are not excessively focused on making profit at the expense of developing people. Uh, it's just to balance this out. There is absolutely not a wrong a being profit by that, but it's just that we must not place profit above our people's development. So what are some of the benefits of profit-oriented leadership? What are some of the benefits of profit-oriented leadership? I can tell you that one of the profits of uh, one of the benefits of profit-oriented leadership is that it helps the organization to continue to survive. If your organization is not making profit, what do you think will happen to that organization over time? It will be out of business. So if you don't want your organization to be out of business, you have to think of a way of generating profit. Uh, somebody said it's not totally wrong. It depends on, on how serious we want those who we are trading to be. Uh, uh, some of the benefits of profit-oriented leadership is partnership, connection, productivity, because you have, uh, you have opportunity to partner with people. You have opportunity to connect, to collaborate with others. And you also have the opportunity to produce uh, productivity is very, very important. 
any organization that is not productive uh, is not going to be is not going to be alive for a long time. So for you to continue to be alive, you need to maintain productivity in your organization. Uh, uh, so we have to be, somebody said we have to be accountable. That is another uh, benefit of profit-oriented leadership because if you are not accountable as a profit-oriented leader, uh, resources will just go down the drain. People will be wasteful uh, about resources. It also said uh, it allows us to efficiently use uh, resources or efficient resources allocation. That is one of the also another benefit of profit oriented leadership. It helps you to uh, utilize resources in such a way that you are not you are not being wasteful uh, with the resources at your disposal. Now let's move to the next slide, which is driving a transformational change in sub-Saharan Africa. Now, what do we need to do to drive a transformational change in sub-Saharan Africa? What type of leadership do we need to drive change in sub-Saharan Africa with your understanding of the prospect of value and profit-oriented leadership? What type of leadership do we need to drive changes of South Africa? You can just put the answer on the chat, I will say it out, or you can or mute and also respond. What type of leadership do we need to drive change in Sub-Sahara Africa? What type of leadership? Okay. Um, okay, I wanted to say something, but yeah. I, I saw Akiwandi Mayowa, yeah, leadership said, by example. Yeah, okay. leadership by example. Uh, for me, a sub-Saharan African of present date, we are... I'll, I'll, I'll put. I'll, I'll say we are lagging behind. Exactly. Presently. Yeah. The present. Um. Uh. Our like we, we are we are not we are not where we are supposed to be. We have uh, indeed uh, overdeveloped, uh, underdeveloped, developed, and you know, I think I can't remember. So we are still underdeveloped, so to say. Yeah. Across board, sub-Saharan, the African giant, every every everybody. Well, they call Africa us developing. They call us developing. They, they call us developing, but we are still underdeveloped. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> except if you are, it's only if you are deceiving ourselves and all. Yeah, I know. And they used to call I think us the developing kind of... as far back as thirty years ago. <laughs> and we are still developing now. <laughs> Whereas, whereas the, the world is already moving to, 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 it's just like our networks now, we are already moving to 5G. Why we are still 3G, 4G in Nigeria now? So yeah. the point I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to make now is the kind of, in my own perspective, my, you know, our views might be different, our opinions might be different, yeah. but I, I believe uh, I think I saw Emmanuel said uh, we need to be accountable. We need yeah. leaders that are accountable. Yeah. We need leaders that will lead by example, like uh, like Maya was yeah. said. So, but for me, I think the style of leadership that we need in Nigeria, or probably I'm using Nigeria as a case study now. Okay. Um, we need a change in the status quo. Yeah. Because we keep, and I think it, it affects the whole, almost all the African countries. We keep, you see some people even ruling for years, for donkey years, and same idea, ideology, same, no changes at all. The only thing that changes is their party, from yeah. PDP to APC to PDP to yeah. LAP, anything. But they are still the same. Okay. Using Nigeria as a case study now, uh, uh, we finished our election uh, February, and the, the last time I checked, the running mate for Atiku was Obi, but nobody was saying that when they are posted, when they are now uh, trying to get to the same office. 
they are so these people are just they're just changing it's just like the skin shedding his skin and 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 oh what we need in total as in the kind of leadership i think we need in this sub-saharan uh, africa is is a leadership of change so to say so thank you thank you yeah i can see people writing a deal we did a deal ideology we did a resilient leader a uh, resilient leadership mm -hmm. an adaptive leader we did a courageous leader we did a visionary leader we did a result oriented leader you know you can see that uh, these are wonderful leaders but unfortunately uh we don't have these leaders uh in our society somebody said we need an accountable uh, leadership of accountability all right but just to sum up what all that we have said uh i think what we need yeah, i want to say that okay uh, go ahead okay so, sorry um, i'm not being okay sorry tell me sir okay uh, i don't know if you should, you should go first you, you you i was raising my hand i was thinking i was going to be giving permission to speak yeah so, just go ahead go ahead so uh, I will quickly make um, two references of um, leaders yeah. that actually made a um, transformational change in their um, society. Um, one is Lee Kuan Yee of Singapore, and then one is um, Stan Lee of Russia. Um, looking at the context of their leadership, um, they, they, we need a leader that leads by example, that actually be the one to show forth the change um, status quo that we need. That is why we, yes, said, we need hey, we need we need someone that can can bring um, about change, yeah. transformational change. We don't need we all need people that have charisma and all that, but we 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 have different kind of people in in in, in time past. But I also think that we need a leader that can actually make us see our own model of um of leadership. Like we we not for us to copy. Other other people's um, model of this. let's do what works for us. Exactly. You know, before, prior, prior to the um, colonial era, we have um, in in, in um, the southwest of Nigeria, we know that they are all Republican by nature. Yeah. So we can look at things like that and actually, you know, make it work. Or look at how it's going to work for us, and you know, start practicing it, and thereafter we'll see some some immense change in our um, society. So we need leaders like that that can actually bring about change, positive change. And um, the reference I made are, 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 are evidence. You can see how Singapore is striving economically. You can yeah. see how Russians, um, how um, Stanley bring about um, developmental and transformational change to Russia. So that's my submission, sir. Thank you very much uh, for that uh, powerful uh, contribution. And that just simply uh, reiterate what we are saying that you have to be the change you want to see. If, if you don't embody that change, it's not going to happen. You have to embody, you have to be an embodiment of that change you want to be an apostle of. You have to embody that change. And when you are able to embody that change, then it will be able, it will be easy uh, for you to implement it. Thank you very much. I also have a contribution, sir. Okay, go ahead, Bayawa. So, sorry, sir, I've not been communicating since. Yes, yeah. I am. It's kind of noisy, so I have fast. to be chatting. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I will talk from two perspectives, okay? And before I say that, I want to make a comment because many leaders we have today, it's unfortunately that they are no leaders. Yeah. That's one thing I want to say. Like, many leaders, my, me growing up, I've seen facets of leaders, even in churches and organizations. And what I've been able to conclude on is that most of them, they are no leaders. Now I want to, I want to take from the world aspect and then rejoin back to the um, Christian aspect too. Now from the world aspect, I'm not a politician, but there's this thing I notice about leadership. If you are leading, you should be able to like produce your kind. Yeah, that's why I say leader by example. You should be able to produce your kind. Yeah. Um, and a leader that actually carry everybody along. I, I'm not. I'm not castigating any leader. The funniest thing about this Buhari regime is that 
I was reading one article the other time, and I realized that so much that this man has actually done to this con country. He's, he's not that bad as we look at him. He's not really that bad. But the thing is, the, the people are, are not carried along. A lot of things that is happening, like there's this, there's this no connection between the leaders and the follower. Once that is not appreciated, the leadership connection cannot be apparent, cannot be reached. So I noticed that then um, um, I, I was, I'm privileged to be in Oyo State, that's Ibadan. I look at the, the governor leadership style. This man, I do follow this man on Facebook. There is no project that this man will do that I will not post on Facebook and then list out all the people that make all the progress, the sources, and reach out to the community to drop to him that what can you do more? These are leaders by example. We, the thing is we have them around, but they are limited. And the, the, the funniest thing about leadership is if the if if you are a true leader, if you move with someone that is not a true leader, you can be corrupted. That's true. That's what my brother is saying the other time. Most of all these cabas that we are seeing, all these people will be and everything. There are some people that actually start well among them. They started well. They have this passion, they have this productive mind, they have this mind of reproducing others. But at the long run, hmm, most of them has actually like, and then the other part I want to talk about, the Christian aspect is, okay, when Jesus Christ said, want to go and want to send his apostles to, to be leaders, because me, I, I didn't see that, that they are carrying mission. They are also leaders on their own aspect, the 12 apostles too. They have to go and prepare themselves to be leaders. In the process of preparing themselves to be leaders, they, they produce the kind of Jesus. Yeah. So we need leaders that can produce the kind. Not only uh, I mean I'm a leader here, produce the kind, and the leader must have a source. Well, Unfortunately, we have many leaders that doesn't have a source. So what do they want to produce from? Yeah. Don't have a source. More of the reason why I, I joined this um, particular platform. Okay, I, I, I've joined it, so a lot of leaders, leadership platform, trying to learn and relearn and relearn upon or relearn. It doesn't, that doesn't mean I should stop because I see myself as a passive, what I'm doing, that I'm kind of leading. You should have a source you are relying to. You cannot know everything. Yeah. What you have learned today like this, you cannot, if you sit down and you say you want to read it, sometimes you'll be tired. Yeah. You need to learn from people, learn from ideas, discuss. You have to have a source that you're tapping from. Many sources are wrong and many sources are fake. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, you you said it all. Uh, we we are just the governor Sheibaki that you mentioned. Uh, anyway, I, I, although I, I don't uh, follow every of his activities, but once in a while I just check out on what he's doing and, and I I can effectively testify. Uh, that what you said is very true about it. You can see an uh, inclusive kind of um, a government in this style of leadership. And I think somebody mentioned that, I think it was Bull Watifa who said, we really need an inclusive and also a knowledgeable leader. Uh, these are very key uh, in bringing or driving a change in this sub-Sahara Africa. Now, this is what I call the great compromise that uh, we, we need to make. And the great compromise that we need to make uh, is what I believe will lead to purpose-driven leadership. And what is the compromise? The compromise is married or aligned uh, value-based leadership with profit-based leadership. Knowing fully well that without value, without possessing good values, people will be easily corrupted. And knowing also fully well that without being able to sustain ourselves as a people through our productivity, the society will be gone organization will be God. So we need to make a compromise between how we want to uh, make uh, good profits 
in such a way that uh, we will not be we will not be jeopardizing uh, the, the life of other people, and also to ensure that we effectively impact good values into people. So if you ask me what is a purpose-driven leadership in this sense, I would say it is finding a common ground of alignment between value leadership a favorable consideration of purpose a favorable uh, consideration of profit as your leadership goal. That is the compromise that I think we need to make uh, to be able to solve or drive the change that we want in Africa, to align value-oriented leadership and then favorable consider consideration of profit as our leadership goal. Uh, and this is, I'm going to quote, I'm going to close with this quote from Adrod. He said, it is by those only who are truly great that virtue is extinct more than riches or honors, or that virtuous actions can be duly appreciated. So uh, I think we've come to the end of this class. Uh, we are going to go into the next session in a moment. And uh, I, I can't wait uh, to meet you in the next session. But if you have any question now, you are free to ask your question uh, before we go to the next uh, session. Any question before we go to the next session? All right, if we don't have any question, let me quickly uh let me quickly